TFR Soft's instructional video on acceleration factors. I'm Dr. Alec Feinberg, founder of TFR Soft, and uh, we're going to be talking about uh, acceleration factors uh, specifically today. Uh, so when you open up TFR Soft, this will be our menu uh, style that you'll see. And um, what you want to do is you want to hyperlink to the uh, menu page, and that'll uh, show you basically all our, our tools in our open style menu. And the first thing you'll notice is that the yellow, each module is highlighted with the yellow uh, squares and they're numbered. Uh, acceleration factors is module 7 and we're going to be using that. Um, and what we're going to do is, um, let me just take a quick look at the tools and then uh, show you um, some of the uses for that. Uh, when we do acceleration factors, uh, for example in module 7, they also apply to module 8 which is the chi-squared uh, test planning. Uh, there's also um, some binomial uh, test planning as well there. And uh, it's an excellent video on this area, so you might want to catch that video as well. Uh, there's also chi-squared automated uh, test planning. There's actually two videos on this. Uh, it's all incorporated uh, for doing accelerated testing, and uh, so the acceleration factors are used in those models, uh, modules rather uh, modules 8 and module uh, 15. And of course uh, you can also uh, use acceleration factors in accelerated reliability growth which is module 10, uh, environmental profiling, uh, somewhat in reliability predictions, in parametric reliability, uh, system reliability use somewhat, um, and uh, basically uh, a little bit in reliability plotting, sometimes in statistical distributions, you can see all the tools in DFR Soft, uh, so you really need to have all this. Also, in field returns, you might uh, sometimes find the use for it. Now, we also have the quality tools, lot sampling, SPC, uh, again, the field returns, design of experiments, um, availability and sparing, uh, engineering tools such as um, thermal analysis, shock and vibration is an ex excellent area where you would also be using sometimes um, acceleration factors for vibration and shock and we'll, uh, some of the, we may or may not get into that today in the short video on how to do acceleration factors but there's a video on that in uh, shock and vibration as well as uh, the physics of failure library uh, with uh, design for reliability and quality uh, guidelines that are helpful as well so there's an awful lot of great tools and uh, we're going to hyperlink uh, to the acceleration factor page uh, but first we're going to look at some slides so let's get into that um, what is uh, an acceleration factor <clears throat> the um, it's a measure of uh, time compression when you do an accelerated test so you do a temperature test at, at a raised ele elevated temperature compared to the used temperature in the field uh, so you're stressing it at a higher uh, rate <clears throat> and um, your acceleration factor uh, times your test time will give you an indication of your lifetime or field use time that you've actually achieved from your accelerated test uh, and we get these acceleration factors from historical models <clears throat> Uh, and let's look at a few historical models. For uh, example, the um, temperature model uh, that we just mentioned, accelerated stress testing uh, for temperature is given by an Arrhenius model. And there's an activation energy and a stress and use temperature involved that you have to enter. Humidity is, has a sort of percent relative humidity. There is a, uh, and the humidity models are combined, the PEC model is combined, Arrhenius and humidity. <clears throat> There's a temperature cycling model, uh, and we'll explain this in a vibration model, and there's a bunch of other models that are in DFR Soft. So let's go over to the uh, software. Here we are. Let's zoom in on the, uh, the first model, which is the Arrhenius uh, model on the top. <clears throat> and uh, you, as we mentioned, for the Arrhenius model, you have to enter an activation energy and a stress and use temperature, and you can get that from the literature, the values for the activation energy, or you might actually have it from test data on, say, a semiconductor or some component that you're testing or <clears throat> assembly. Uh, for assemblies, we usually use about 0.7. And your, your test time might be a thousand hours and you might uh, have an indication of what the failure rate is at your 30 degrees C, let's say it's 10 fits. Um, and your results 
so here, uh, here's your results. The acceleration factor is 152 uh, from these two parameters of, uh, if you're the stress of 100 uh, degrees C versus 30. And um, remember we said that if you take uh, the acceleration factor 152 and you multiply it by your test time, which is 1,000 hours, uh, and you divide that by your 8760, you, it shows you it's 17.3 uh, years. And there it is, 17.4. Uh, and it also says that the expected failure rate at 100 degrees C would be actually 1524 fits. Another way to think of that is if you found 1524 fits on test, uh, you, would, uh, you could estimate that the failure rate at 30 degrees would be 10 fits. And there's another model here, a backwards model. So if you know your acceleration factor and your stress and use temperature, you can get your uh, activation energy. <clears throat> and we'll show you another way to do that in a sec. Um, here's the temperature humidity acceleration uh, model. Uh, so if you're doing a temperature humidity test, uh, you have to put in the stress and use humidity. A typical test would be 85 degrees C and 85% relative humidity. And then you'd put in the average use uh, uh, stress percent relative humidity in the field uh, and the use temperature. And it has some uh, default values, suggested values for the uh, uh, PEC exponent for humidity and the uh, activation energy 0.7 EV. And don't forget, you have your uh, guidance with your examples. You can right click on that and look at your comment. You can move it around. You can change the comment. You can add to it. Uh, and then when you're done, you can just click it away. <clears throat> So for the conditions that we just mentioned, the uh, acceleration factor for temperature is 96, for humidity is 7.4, and the, com the combination of the two is 713. And if you multiply 713 times your test time of 130 hours, you come up with about 10.6 years. Uh, next model is the temperature cycle model. And in a temperature cycle test, uh, we're going from a low temperature to a high temperature. We may, to some chambers, uh, you might do it in one chamber where you just have one the component in one chamber and the chamber goes up and down in temperature. Another popular chamber is it goes to, from a low temperature to a high temperature and switches between the two chambers. So let's say the low temperature chamber is minus 10 and the high temperature chamber is 100 degrees C. So the delta T is 110. And you might have a component that's at 30 degrees in the field and minus 15 degrees at night on average, and that would be a delta T swing of 45, so that's what you would enter. And your Coffin-Manson exponent might be for solder joints of 2 or 2.5, uh, and the number of cycles per day in the field is 1, and the number of test cycles is 500. You can also enter the weight, and I'll tell you that what that does in, for in a second. Uh, so here we have the temperature cycle acceleration model of 6. So for 500 cycles, that would be equivalent to 8.2 years. And um, if you enter the weight, it gives you an estimate that you should be testing about 0.3 hours. <clears throat> uh, so you may also want to use a thermocouple to uh, actually figure out how long you're going to be dwelling at each temperature, the low and high temperature. Here's your fatigue model. <clears throat> and uh, you may want to, on the, uh, there, this is uh, for, say, X, Y, or Z axis. <clears throat> and you want to, there's an ability to use uh, G, uh, or GRMS versus uh, PSD, which is usually in G squared per hertz. For those who are familiar with your uh, uh, thing, you also have a hyperlink uh, to a triaxial X, Y, and Z fatigue model on the vibration page. You can hyperlink to that page, and here it is. You can uh, see the um, fatigue page for X, Y, and Z axis. So it's a little more sophisticated model than what we're doing on the acceleration factor page. Going back to that, here we are back on that page, <clears throat> and. Um, so you can put in your, uh, you have to put in your exponent and you have to understand the difference between G squared per hertz kind of test. Usually the G, G, GRMS versus G squared per hertz is the vibration exponent is uh, a factor of two difference. And that's explained uh, on the model information uh, over here uh, if you uh, say um, look at that. Uh, you can do that. You can see the difference in the uh, model. Um, here we are. And it shows you that information, m divided by 2. So uh, there's your results for your vibration, 625, or g squared per hertz for the parameters we introduced, 15. Um, and it gives you an indication of the hours in the field. It's about 0.1 years for this test. Um, so it's a 
that's the model for that. Uh, there's also a modified temperature cycling called a Norris Landsberg model. So if you're doing temperature cycling, you don't quite, um, uh, if you're doing it at a high rate, so you're not quite dwelling long enough, you would probably use this model because it gives you the frequency of, uh, <clears throat> has a frequency exponent and it provides you an information is if you're not going to dwell for the full amount of time, it also gives you some um, <clears throat> Uh, stress and use temperature ability so if you're doing solder joint reliability and you have a high mass and you can't quite get anywhere to dwell you're not doing it uh, you're doing it at some rate <clears throat> you would use this model and it's got some indication of what you would use uh, uh, for the coffin mitts and exponent etc there's also we mentioned uh, if you do an Arrhenius, if you're trying to come up with an activation energy and you do a test for that at different temperatures and you get a failure rate of MTTF at each temperature, you can put that in and you can plot that and it will come up with your activation energy. So this is uh, you have an ability to do that in DFR soft uh, is look at your Arrhenius least squared uh, failure. So we have to kind of move on. We're trying to keep the video down to 10 minutes. We also have an electromigration uh, acceleration model uh, for the uh, black model, it's called. <clears throat> and uh, don't forget your black electromigration model, uh, there's a hyperlink to that. Uh, and it tells you what the parameters are, you're doing current density here, etc. Uh, there's a moisture diffusion information model for uh, plastic encapsulated uh, for the dye temperature, for how long it takes moisture to diffuse through a dielectric uh, E-model. <clears throat> And uh, that's pretty much it. I can't go through those in detail due to the time restrictions here. But if you have any questions on any of these models, please give us a uh, shout through uh, DFRSoft.